Hi there. Uh, so I don't actually have a joke to tell this time. Um, I, I, I did, in fact, go to the Museum of the American Revolution, and that will be starting shortly. Um, and the review, obviously, will be at the end. But something bad happened when I came out, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Um, it didn't affect, you know, how I saw the American Revolution, but it affected me, you know, um, and I'm all right, you know, everything is back to normal. Um, but it was just such a traumatic experience that I think it needs to be a part of this. Um, but it was also just my birthday on Sunday. And whenever it's my birthday, I get super lethargic and I think back and, um, you know, one of the things I thought back on is I remember about a year ago, maybe a year and a month, a little bit, uh, I had started going to therapy again and I, I was going with, uh, my pastor, you know, um, and, um, uh, he, you know, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I, I knew that I was broken though. And, and that was the important part. I knew, I was just all these pieces and I was just pushing through life and I wasn't one whole piece. Um, and, you know, in talking to him and repairing the pieces one by one by one by one. And honestly, getting closer to God, my life started to change. You know, I, I started feeling good again and feeling like I wanted to go out and see places. And in that want to go out and see places and do things rather than, you know, waiting, I started making content for you guys. And even though it's my birthday, I wanted to say thank you. Because I know for a fact, if I would have, you know, put out the videos that I did, you know, if I would have started with Kinzua or, man, I can't even remember what I started with, but if I would have started with that video and it got zero views, I probably wouldn't have filmed anything else, you know? Um, I, I just, I, I cannot express how thankful I am because although this was a journey for me and it was to better myself, it ended up being something that we could do together and that that was incredible, you know, that, that was amazing to me because every day I would think, and I have for the last couple of months, I would think, what can I do? How can I make something, um, you know, for you guys and how can I <laughs> enrich my own life? Like I've been places so far in the last six months that I th never thought I would be seeing ever. Did I ever think I would see something as incredible as Kinzua or go to Gettysburg or be in a bachelorette party or be in a wedding? No, you know, it's just every single thing that I've seen has just been so incredible. And with how good I feel and how, how blessed I am to be the person I am today rather than the person I was a year ago. You know, it's thank God, thank my pastor, and thank you. I just, I, I hope my words can be enough that you understand how much it means to me that you care enough to watch. Now, am I sitting here saying, oh, I got thousands of views? No, but I'm... I'm thankful for what I have. Um, and, you know, this was a bad experience. And, and you know, we'll get to that suspense. Um, but I just, I needed to say thank you. Because me turning 27 and feeling like the next few years are going to be the best of my life has never been a thought in my mind. And... I know because of those three things, and more importantly, you, that's simple, that's easy. So if you do like my videos, 
And I mean, if you really like it, if you see a video and you go, oh, it's all right. Or if you look at a video and you go, man, this is really good. Share it. That's all I ask. I don't need you to be an over-the-top cheerleader. I don't even need you to share it if you don't like it. But if you do like something, if you see something and think, man, this is really good, share it. Because that joy that I have, that now I'm giving back to you, I would love other people to be able to do that. I'd like people that feel like me to be able to come here. And the only way that we get that message across is if you share the video. I'm just being honest. Um, but thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm 27 years old now. And, uh, well, let's just jump into the video. Good morning, everybody. We are headed to the Museum of the American Revolution today. Now, it's in Philly. Um, I heard about it probably a month ago, and as it usually does, Facebook kept reminding me, hey, you check this out uh, with ads and everything. So it's like I kept getting pushed. Hey, you should check this out. Check this out. So we're finally going. I'm really, really excited because it looks awesome, and, you know, I like the American Revolution. Um, I don't like all revolutions, though. Just the American, I guess. It's weird. But yeah, let's go. Those are all the donators. We are headed into the Patriot section. I believe this is going to be where the flags are. Hi. This is our special exhibit flags and founding documents. We have original flags from 13 stars all the way up to 56 stars. Wow. And original documents as early as 1740s with the Georgia Charter here going through the Revolutionary Period into the Civil War uh, and uh, later on as well. Okay. Uh, the flags are not necessarily uh, in chronological order. They're uh, mostly in order of star count. Uh, some of them are exclusionary flags, uh, like during the Civil War, the removing states that have seceded from the Confederacy. Uh, there are some that are um, anticipatory flags, like the 56 star flag, including U.S. territories. Um, it'll note for each one you know, exa exactly you know, the date of, or a ra range of when it came from and, and what it, uh, is unique about it. Um, you'll notice you know, all different sorts of patterns, and that was really up to each individual flag maker, mm -hmm. how they're going to arrange uh, the stars. It's not standardized until 1911, gotcha. the actual you know, arrangement that we have in the flag today. Um, and then even before that point, the process of adding new states mm -hmm. wasn't created until 1818. So that even though this is a 13 star flag, yeah. it's not from a period when there were 13 states. It ah. was made in the 1800s when there were um, at least uh, you know upwards of 20 states, uh, and it wasn't uh, you know they're retroactively then adding it in 1818. The states that have come between you know the 13 and and uh, you know whatever gotcha. after that. So. Okay. Uh, take a look around. If you have questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Hello? Is this thing working? Of course it is. Uh, so I decided I was going to do a voiceover for this because it was going to be a lot easier. Um, honestly, this entire room was so quiet. Um, it was like a sensory deprivation tank. Um, at some point, I thought I could hear my organs bubbling inside of me. Um, so now that that gross image is out of the way, 
they have a lot of cool flags here. This entire setup is about um, showing off like all the different flags through the years. I mean, they had crazy flags. They had flags with 15 stars, 16 stars. They even had uh, flags with 56 stars. And that was a flag when we considered all the territory states as well. Um, I mean, there was a slavery flag. I mean, there was just so many flags. And there was a lot of old books. Now, I think the reason it was dark was one to really light up the flags and show off the beauty of that. But I also think it was because light damages these flags a lot. Um, now, they do have a spotlight, you know, shown on them. Uh, but, you know, other than that, um, I think with the, the pages and everything, um, that was the reason for it. But it, this was really, really cool. Um, you know, it's, it's only one of the exhibits, but I thought this was really neat. Uh, and if you just come for this, it's, you know, it's okay. I, I, we'll, you know, we're getting, we're getting to the good stuff after this. Um, yeah. So I mean, I'm walking out of the, I'm walking out of the room right now. So we got the museum shop here, but I think we're going to go upstairs first because the guy warned us that there's a tour happening right now with a lot of school kids. We don't want to get stuck with that. This is so awesome. This place is huge too. These are absolutely massive. Like, I, I'm shocked at how huge these paintings are. And I mean, with this size, they have to be the originals. So this is the Siege of Yorktown. Wow. This whole thing is huge too. This was cast in a New Jersey foundry and displays the royal arms of King George II. In the treaty that ends the war, Wow, that's really old. So is that Holy Crow? It's from either 1750 or 1775. And that's wood. Wow. In the view from London, maintenance 
independence of the provinces means defending Britain's new territories and maintaining order among their diverse populations. But Native Americans in these territories do not accept British claims to their lands. The Ministry believes the most efficient and economical strategy for managing the situation is to station troops in America and create a boundary between Indian and colonial lands. English colonists, having helped to defeat the French, view Indian lands as their spoils of war. But to quell the Indian rebellion, Britain's proclamation of 1763 sets a western boundary on settlement to be policed by British troops. Many colonists are skeptical. I can never look upon that proclamation in any other light than as a temporary expedient to quiet the minds of the Indians. That was for, of course. For colonists like Washington, the war with France was both a fight to secure land for the British Empire and a struggle to preserve British liberties. For colonists, these liberties included the right to be taxed only by their elected colonial assemblies. But in far off London, Parliament insists on taxing the colonists in order to pay British soldiers stationed in America. Perhaps a small tax on paper, like the one long paid in Britain, a stamp tax. Many colonists are. Wow, these are all old. Seventeen sixty-three. British victory in the Seven Years' War ends more than a century of imperial conflict with France and Spain. The victory secures Britain's global empire and the benefits of trade for English people. In the treaty that ends the war, Britain claims vast swaths of French, Spanish, and Indian lands in North America. I sure like their punch. Wow. 
Wow, I could not imagine that is heavy. Wow, it hurt my hand. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wow. The first convention and ratification. Old shackles and a busk. Look at all these ships. independence from King George. Our Confederacy is divided. Some wish to stay neutral. Some want to support the British. Some want to support the United States. The United Nations has to decide. Where do we stand? King George and the colonists are like a parent and a child. We should stay out of their family quarrel. Yes, we should. In the river of life, we have their back. Zooms in pretty nicely. Hi, folks. Over here, we have a four minute immersive film called Field of Battle. It gives you a taste of the battle of brain wine. It has strobe lights, loud noises, and urges of battle. I have a group in there now, but I can run it in about five to ten minutes.
this is pretty cool. Man, every corner you go, there's more exhibit. It's pretty insane. Whoa, these are everything is so detailed. That's pretty solid. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Aren't these the ones that they were talking about in National Treasure? What? This is awesome. I don't know which one it is. A neat collection. George Washington's campaign buttons. You're missing the uh, 1789 inaugural, though. I found one once. That's very fortunate for you. And a reminder that the revolution replaced a king with the people as the final say and seat of power in this new nation. These are pictures of all the revolutionaries. Wow. Well, as many as they had, but still, wow. That's incredible. Holy crow, that really took us in a circle. Was not expecting that. So here they have an entire uh, theater event that happens. Ooh, cool looking picture. I haven't seen George Washington look like this often. He does not look as cool as he always does. These stairs are so cool. All that's left is the gift shop. And this is a huge gift shop. Holy crow. This one I usually like the ones that like like that's really cool that's really cool but this it actually says the name of what it is so it's like you know that's even better eight dollars you know <laughs> this is like metal so it makes sense it's not a bad price it's very very awesome see this one's just a flag and a picture so it's like nothing really says it on there how much are these just as oh it's six dollars yeah well i i think i prefer when it says it but yeah they got hats a lot of different hats and socks what are these is that george washington no it looks sort of like thomas Paine, but oh it's alexander hamilton a lot of books as well Ooh. Look at all these mugs. A lot of cool mugs. Thirty bucks. Wow. Well, yeah. You know. I guess if you want a shirtless George Washington, there he is. Thirty bucks. You know, um, my car was gone. As soon as I came out, you know, I went to where I had parked the car and the car wasn't there. And, you know, I wasn't panicking. Um, I didn't think it was stolen because I had OnStar and I was, you know, confident that if the window was broken or something that I would have gotten an alert. Um, so I called OnStar and, uh, you know, they said, uh, well, we can't, you know, track the car until uh, there's a police report in. So I called the police and they said, well, we can't do anything until we know if it was towed or not. So here's a phone number, called the tow company, had to leave a message. To this day, actually, I still have not heard back. So, um, from that number that I had called. So then I took matters into my own hands, ended uh, about 20 minutes north in North Philly. 
um, and then finally realized that on the picture I took of where I was parked, there was a phone number for the tow, you know, free number. And I called and I had to go into Central Philly then. So it's another 20 minute Uber ride to go into Central Philly and, you know, waiting in line and, you know, you had to go through this whole metal detector and, you know, oh my gosh, I, they, they had that wand everywhere on my body. And it was, it was, it was really, it was stressful. Um, and at this point, I still don't know what happened to the car. So at this point, you know, it's like two hours later and the car could be gone. I don't know. And, um, they, they did say it was towed. Finally, when I found that out, um, you know, I had to pay the, uh, the tow fee and then there was going to be a fine. Um, when I asked what, what the issue was, um, they said, well, we're not sure there, there's not a specific thing there. And I'm like, okay. So then I had to go down to South Philly to pick up the car and pay for that and everything. And, uh, you know, luckily I was able to get the registration and everything out of my car. It was just, you know, and, uh, you know, I have the, I have the ticket right here. It, it's funny. Um, the car was sitting there for five minutes before they towed it five minutes. So like basically as soon as I got into the place and got my ticket scanned, the car was already gone. And I was only in there maybe about 45 minutes to an hour. So um, it, it was gone pretty quick, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so that was... Uh, that wasn't fun. Um, and uh, the only thing it says is stop prohibited. So I'll never know why I got, uh, you know, towed. I, you know, I took a picture before I went in and I was... I was where I was supposed to be, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know why, but, um, that was a really traumatic experience. I mean, making this whole video, if I can be completely honest with you guys, was traumatic. Um, you know, cause, and, and, you know, I'm going on a vlog for next Thursday tomorrow and, you know, I'm nervous, um, because, it's just, it's these little things that you think aren't going to be an issue and then they're an issue. And that turned into a four hour extra day in Philly issue. And, um, you know, I, I apologize that I didn't get anything filmed, um, you know, a part of that whole situation. Uh, but I at least wanted to talk about it because it is going to be a stressful thing for me in the future, you know, because I thought I did everything right and then you know, car was gone. So the moral of the story is just don't park in Philly. That's, that's what I can tell you. Uh, let's review. It was good. I thought the museum of the American revolution was good. Despite everything that happened to me, I thought it was good. It was good. Um, there were really only like two big exhibits. The rest were like shows that they do, which is, great you know but i i can't film any of that and, and i watched them you know they were they were all right um but with a building that size i only spent about an hour and 15 minutes in there um i don't know um it was just it was okay you know it was good <laughs> um I would say go there every, every couple of months, they add a new exhibit in. Um, I thought the flag exhibit was okay. Um, but really where I thought they shined was the exhibit that was upstairs. Cause that was just a, a massive exhibit. Like every turn you go, it was a whole plethora more, but for the 20 something dollars, you know, in Philly, I guess you think you're going to see something new you know, shoot me, but, uh, or don't, um, but yeah, it's just like, it was, it was just, it was a little bit of a bummer. Um, but the experience was fun. Um, it was fun getting to see everything. And like I said, that exhibit upstairs and I think the building, I was really impressed with the building, like that spiral staircase with all the flags on it. Like, Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Um, but yeah, so it's like, go see it, you know, um, Give it a try. Maybe it's something you will like more. Um, I think from a recording aspect, I wasn't able to really film most of, like if the other two exhibits they would call exhibits were 
like in the theater, then that's different, you know. But to me, there were only like two walk around exhibits. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's just a little weird to me, but uh, go check it out. Maybe you'll like it. Um, I wasn't a huge fan, uh, but I got to see it and a beautiful, massive building and just not enough, I think, that was put into it. But that's just me. So, all right. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm back home safe and, I, you know, thank you for uh, any of your thoughts that you had. Um, you know, uh, we're going to be parking somewhere else <laughs> in the future because I don't want to go through that again. Definitely not. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I guess we'll have to see where we're at next week. Bye.